Hello and welcome to today's episode. So we're starting off today inside the nether. The reason being is because we built our potion room last episode and we built a little frog farm. The reason why we needed the frog farm was so we can actually get some frog lights and finally finish off the eyes for our giant copper head that we built a fair few episodes ago now. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I've already found a really small basalt delta biome and uh, I'm pretty much just going to build up this bridge a little bit further and so we can actually reach that just so our frogs have a relatively safe journey through the nether. So let's get to it. And what I'm doing here is I'm building up a staircase towards the soul sand biome in front of me. So like I said, we have actually found a basalt delta biome. There is a huge one slightly below the soul sand biome, but it sort of peaks up a little bit into the soul sand biome, which is actually pretty good. I'm just gonna kill this gas. Yeah, so that's gonna be kind of a problem as well, the amount of gas in here. I don't really want to spend all the time uh, building up roofs and stuff, so it's gonna be pretty much a death run with our frogs once we actually get them on this path. So here I am, I'm actually at the Basalt Delta Biome now. And I'm just going to fill in all this area with lava. With uh, stone, sorry. I'm going to fill in the lava with stone. Uh, just because we want a safe place for our frogs to devour the magma cubes. And we've built up some walls around this little area. And I'm just doing a quick test and it seems like magma cubes will spawn in this little area that I've, that I've walled in. So I just moved a little bit away and we can already see there's quite a few magma cubes here already. So I think this place will be perfect for our frog farm. Just going to take care of these now. There's no point in letting the magma cream go to waste. That's another thing as well is we can actually convert this into a magma cream farm uh, after we've gotten our frog lights. And we've built up the walls a little bit more. I have put slabs on top of the walls. That's to stop magma cubes spawning. Uh, there is a slight issue is that frogs can jump really high and they may be able to jump up onto these walls. Uh, well, we'll just kind of see if we go. Uh, if that ends up happening, we'll just build up the walls pretty much to the ceiling. And it is time. So we've got all our frogs stored here in our potion room. Just going to break this, lasso a few of them up. And then we are going to go on our death march into the nether. I'm going to take... I've got five leashes, but I'm just going to take... If I, yeah, I might as well just use them all. I mean, technically, we only actually need one frog to make it. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a situation where, you know, some animals, they lay like a thousand eggs and only like ten survive childhood. That's kind of a, that's kind of what we're doing with these frogs. All right, so the moment of truth. Can we keep at least one frog alive? throughout the nether. I guess we'll find out. So that's good, good. It seems they've all gotten into the portal now. And I think the leads actually teleported to the nether as well because I can't find any others around. And so we have one here. We'll get him. Don't want him to go back in there. One here. Oh, looks like the other one went back into the portal. And we have one on the wall here. Uh, and I think... I mean, we know one went back into the portal. I don't know where the others went. So I think we're already down to two frogs and we've barely made it three meters. So this is the most dangerous part. Well, actually, maybe the uh, the soul sand above is the most dangerous. Just because it's really exposed, there's going to be ghasts spawning all over the place. Blazes spawning in the Nether Fortress. So far, so good, though. It seems like we've had a fairly easy run of it. The hardest part was probably actually the frogs going in the nether portal. And that gas there is going to be a problem. There we go. I don't really know how the frogs will interact with soul sand either. It may stop them from jumping. I know mud can do... Oh, okay, that's not good. Seems like our frogs made it out safe though. I'm just going to take care of these skeletons as well because there is a chance that a stray arrow might just uh, fly past and get one of our frogs in the knee. Again, just taking care of these skeletons well in advance. Yeah. 
And we have a ghast attack. Oh, that was that was skillful. Oh, that was not. Oh, that was skillful. Oh, and there's a ghast. See, this is chaos. This is chaos. Ghasts from all angles. We still have our frogs, though. We're still going well so far. Remember, we only need one to make it. And we've run into our first problem. Oh, so one's already gotten loose. And he's on the run. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. I think Soul Sand, they kind of sink into it and it slows them down and they can't jump, which is an issue. I mean, I have laid down a fair amount of bricks and stuff, but it's not really doing me any good at the moment. And so one escapes, don't know where he is, but we do have one and we're on the home straight now. And all we need to do is just get him around here and through that door. I'm kind of worried that the lead's going to break with this pillar. Just in case it does, it's going to pop these blocks down. And it, I think I think we've done it. So we, we, we brought a total of five frogs in here. We managed to get one into the actual farm. Good enough. I can already see that magma cubes have spawned in there. So it seems like we have two, a small one and a large one. Just going to blast this guy back. So I'm pretty sure that frogs can only eat the small ones. Uh, I mean, I was thinking of ideas how to automate this farm, but I mean, it could be done with like hoppers on the ground to collect the stuff, but I don't really know how you would kill the large mamma cubes to turn them into small ones. If you used iron golems, then there's a chance of the iron golems just killing the small ones as well, or accidentally hitting the frogs. So I'm not really sure, but this guy should start eating these now. Ah, there he goes. So we have our first frog light there. Look at the little guy go. He's on a rampage. This is what this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see chaos, carnage. I wanted to see the march of the frogs into the nether. The idea was to have like maybe ten in here just consuming everything, but uh, I mean, I suppose this little guy's enough for now. And I walked away a short distance and look at this. Loads of magma cubes have spawned. We're going to let this guy off the leash. And he's going to go wild. Seems like he's not in the mood to be wild for some reason. I think there may be a delay between when... How many they eat and a cool down for when they can actually eat one again. Because they do kind of idle for a little bit. Or maybe that's just a, a pathfinding thing. And I found the escapee frog. So we're going to try and get him in the farm as well. It seems like you can actually just drag them on soul sand. Don't know why that wasn't working originally. I'm just going to wall this off as well. And we did indeed manage to get this guy back. So now we have theoretically doubled the productivity of our farm. There aren't any magma cubes here at the moment, but I'm sure some will spawn once I go a little bit further away. And look at all these magma cubes. Look at all these frog lights, magma cream. Just beautiful, isn't it? So yeah, these guys have been going on it for a, for a while now. I think we've pretty much, once they've finished eating all these, I'm, I'm safe to say that we've almost certainly got enough frog lights for our eyes. And then uh, we'll get straight to actually installing those eyes into our head. And here we are now, so we've filled in the glass blocks for our eyes. And what we're going to do is we are going to place the frog lights behind the glass blocks so that the eyes actually have a glow when viewed from the other side. So I'm just going to pop those down in here now. And I did experiment a little bit in a creative world about whether I wanted the, the frog lights themselves to be like coming out of the head as the eyes or whether it was best to just put the glass in and put the frog lights behind. And I think it definitely looks a lot better with the frog lights behind the glass. It gives kind of a 3D effect for the eyes because the glass is transparent and it also still gives the glow that I wanted so uh, I think it's the best the best choice for these eyes and just going to do the same with this eye now and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like and here we are so here are what the eyes look like I'm not really sold on the glass colors so I went with stained white glass but I think I might actually change it up a little bit and give the head pupils that are a different color so like the glass around the the dark center of the eye maybe have it blue or yellow i think the flame chariot and elden ring actually has blue eyes 
I'm not sure though. I'd have to double check. But we'll do, we'll do some some experimenting and we'll see what what works best. And now we're going to start building up some scaffolding around it. So I've got all the materials here, mainly just a lot of spruce wood, ladders and stuff like that. So we want this this scaffolding around the head because I do plan on waxing the head soon. It is getting to the the state of oxidation now that I want. I want it to be mainly this this uh, turquoise colour. So I've built up some scaffolding on the right hand side now. And I'm not sure about it. I mean it looks okay and it is functional in the purpose if you can actually climb up there and, and wax this side of the head but I'm, I'm not sure. The thing is as well I was, I was planning on putting some large towers next to the head and I would have to remove some of this. Maybe I've just used the wrong block palette. I mean, I did swap out some of the spruce wood with campfires to give it a more rickety, cobbled together aesthetic, but I'm still not entirely happy with it, to be honest. So maybe we'll try some new things. Uh, some of the new copper blocks in the update look really good. So, uh, yeah, like the, the uh, chiseled copper blocks, they look really good as like parts of scaffolding. So maybe we'll spruce it up a little bit later another time. But for now, it serves its function well enough. So yeah, I've, I've climbed all the way to the top here. So it, it, it is functional. It is going to gonna do its job, I suppose. So let me know if you like the scaffold or not. I'm not too keen on it. Maybe give me some ideas on how to change it. I'm thinking maybe use more chains or fence posts or something. Or maybe just a lighter color of, of log instead of the spruce logs because they, they maybe stand out a little bit too much when the head is supposed to be the main feature. So yeah, do let me know about that down in the comments. But apart from that, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.